Hello and welcome to the 13th tutorial of this series. In today's lesson we'll be looking at applying maps to our materials and exploring what maps are. Now before I explain all this, I'll go around and show you the other parts of the material editor that we didn't look at last time. Let's go over to our toolbar and activate the material editor or alternatively you can use the letter M on your keyboard. Now in the last tutorial we mainly explored what happens up here. So we managed to apply the material to an object. We managed to reset it. Uh, we explored a little bit on how to change the names. And today I basically want to focus from the shader basic parameters going down. Now what we've got in this Dropbox, our default will always be Blin. And this is what we'll use most of the time. But if you ever want to create something else, you can go ahead and select, for example, metal, translucent shader or multi-layer, anything in here you want to use as your default base in creating your material. But we're going to leave it on what we found it, which is Blin. Now you notice here we've got wire, two-sided, face map and, and face -seated. Now these we won't be using them much, but I'll just show you, I'll just show you what the wire does to our object because we might actually use this at some point. Um, so I won't be using that, but let me create a sphere. Okay, maximize your viewport and just pan your screen. Now, just click and drag your material to the sphere. And as soon as you hit the wire uh, tick box, you notice our material change and our whole objects turned into sort of a wire mesh sort of thing. And as soon as you click on the two sided, that helps show the other side quite clearly. Um, quite clearly. Now switch those off because we won't be using them as much, but I'll explain more as we get to the actual. But I'll, but I'll be looking at them more when we get to the actual tutorials where we need to use them. Down here we've got the Blin basic parameters. Now, in here we've got ambient diffuse specular this allows us to choose our colors so you can select whatever color you want from there you can even select uh, this empty box here to apply a map to it but we are not going to do that so i'll close the self illumination tick box almost makes your object glow as soon as you tick on that change the color for example i go with red you notice that reds become much brighter and our material has lost all its shadows. So if I click that, you notice we've got our shadows and it's making it more 3D. As soon as I hit that, it's more brighter, almost almost like a light bulb kind of um, effect. So we won't be using that on this tutorial. Right below it is the opacity. Now, as we decrease the opacity, we can see through our objects or whichever objects we've applied that particular material to. I can now see the box behind uh, this sphere uh, clearly. And as you increase your opacity, your object becomes more opaque. So that's pretty much what opacity does. And then we've got specular highlights right below. This allows us to control the glossiness and shininess of, of a material uh, when applied to an object. So for example, as I increase the specular level, you notice in here we're getting a little, a little curve going up. And as soon as you let go, you notice our object's a bit more glossy. We've got a sort of highlight around here. And the glossiness area allows us to either decrease that size on our object or increase it by reducing the amount. So you can either enter an actual amount here or use the arrows, but the arrows are much easier. And the soften area we're gonna be exploring that in later drawers when you actually create materials where we need to use that. Now down here, we've got a few different rollouts that you can just click on any of them and you drop down to review the parameters within it. But um, one of the most important ones you're gonna be using is the maps rollout. This has a list of a few different things you can do to a material. You can just click on any one of this, select the map you want, and once you've applied it, control the visibility of that map on your material by going up and down these arrows. We are going to apply the material on our object and we'll be exploring how to apply a map 
to that material. So let's go ahead to do an empty slot. So just click and drag it to, to our cube at the back. Now let's select that and make it slightly bigger. Um, just get your select and uniform scale. Let's click and drag it up and maybe that big. Let's go ahead and hit the empty button next to diffuse. Soon as you hit that, you'll be presented with a lot of the default maps that comes with 3D Studio Max. Now we want to use a normal image from our computer, so double click on bitmap and that will allow you to select whatever image you have on your computer. In this case, I'll be using um, an iPhone app I was working on. So just click open. As soon as I do that, you notice our material now has a bit of that map uh, showing. I'll double click, you notice my app there. So I'll close that. And the reason we've got triangles around this because we've already got that material applied to our object. Because remember, we haven't activated it here. As soon as you hit that, you notice we've got our iPhone app in here. So we've literally just applied it to our object and that's how maps work. So that image could be anything that you created or it could be an image of a person, bricks or anything you want. So when you hit render, you notice it's clearer because remember Max is quite a heavy program so it's showing you uh, some of your objects in low resolution. So that's what we've created um, and I think for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna stop it there. I don't want to confuse you too much um, but I want you to keep in mind that when we get to the relevant tutorials, most of these fields will be explained in more details. So for today, I thank you very much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you on the next lesson. Bye for now.